Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Today's gospel, taken from John chapter 9, has something in common with last Sunday's gospel, taken from the gospel of John, still in John chapter 4. Today we heard of Jesus' encounter with a man born blind last week. It was his encounter with a Samaritan woman at the well. In both episodes, the perception of who Jesus really is deepens as the story progresses. With the woman at the well in John chapter 4 last week, last Sunday, the longer the conversation with Jesus was prolonged, the clearer she perceived his true identity. For example, in John 4, verse 9, she simply refers to Jesus as a Jew. She says, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Then in verses 11 and 15, she refers to him as sir, which is a more respectful form of address. She says, sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. By verse 19, she's calling Jesus a prophet. In verse 29, she says, refers to him as the Christ. And then by the end of the story, by verse 42, all of the Samaritans are actually referring to Jesus as the Savior of the world. Something similar happens in today's gospel. After the blind man is healed and he asks, he's asked how his eyes were opened, he answers in John 9, verse 11, he said, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes. So he starts off by calling Jesus simply a man. When the blind man's asked by the Pharisees who he thinks Jesus is, he says in verse 17 that he is a prophet. So he went from a man to a prophet. After giving a brilliant defense of Jesus' ministry in front of the Pharisees, the man born blind says that even more clearly that Jesus is from God. He says that in verse 33 to the Pharisees themselves. By the end of the story, when he encounters Jesus a second time, this time he can see him, he affirms that Jesus is both the Son of Man and Lord. And then by verse 38, it says that he actually worshipped Jesus. And remember that the evangelist St. John himself tells us at the end of his gospel, why he wrote what he wrote. He says, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. John 20, verses 30 and 31. So believing in Jesus, believing that he is the Messiah, that he is God, himself and learning to entrust ourselves to him and learning to entrust our lives and learning to trust him uh, is the reason that the apostle relates all of these stories of Jesus in the gospel, all of these encounters of Jesus with Jesus that we see in his gospel. The longer we prolong our conversations with the Lord, the better we'll understand who he really is and too also we'll better understand who we are in God's eyes, who we are according to God's perspective. These two stories reminded me of the second book of the Chronicles of Narnia, for those of you who have read it. I think it's Prince Caspi in the second book, uh, and we'll just end on this note. In the book, Prince Caspian, the main character, who's Aslan the lion, he returns to Narnia, and he meets little Lucy, and one of the four, she's one of the four children who helped save Narnia from the power of the White Witch in the first book, The Lion, the, Lit, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Aslan in the series is a figure that represents Christ himself. So upon seeing Aslan, little Lucy is overjoyed, and she notices that Aslan's now grown in size, or so she thinks, or so she thinks. At one point she says, Aslan, you're bigger. Aslan replies to her, that is because you are older, little one. And Lucy asks, well, it's not because you are, it's not because you're actually bigger or older. And Aslan says, I am not, meaning that he's not older. And then he says to Lucy, but every year that you grow, you will find me bigger. But every year that you grow, you will find me bigger. The more we grow in the spiritual life, the bigger, the more important Jesus becomes to us, and the clearer his true identity becomes to us, as it did with the woman at the well and with the man born blind 
in today's gospel. So let's pray that this a time of national, uh, statewide, and uh, perhaps even national, soon to be national, we're not sure, lockdown. Let's pray that this time will give us the opportunity to draw closer to our Lord as we learn to put what he, we believe in our heads, uh, as we learn to put it more into practice in our lives as well in this extraordinary time in our nation and in the world. And let's also ask Our Lady for the grace to be able to receive the sacraments, all of us, uh, again, very, very soon. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever.